if you're new to using ink and pens in your artwork, maybe you're just taking up line and wash or you're taking part of the month challenges like Inktober, it can be really confusing. You know, should you just use a ballpoint pen? Should you use one of those micron pens everyone else seems to use? Or, well, you know, what about a beautiful glass pen? And then inks, oh my goodness, you know, some are permanent. and You might end up with inky fingers like mine. Or there's beautiful, like, little drawing inks for artists or big bottles of Indian ink. Well, I want to give you a really brief overview of what to look for in your inks and your pens and how they might combine and what sort of marks they might make. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish someone had told me about ages ago. And this week it's a brief overview of the wonderful world of ink and pens. Right, let's give you a really quick introduction to the ink and the pens and then understand how those two things interact with each other. So when you're looking for inks, you're going to consider your colour. Things like Indian ink, they just come in black. But artists' inks come in the most glorious combination of colours you can think of. They are vibrant, they are bright, they are juicy. Oh my goodness, you can have such fun with them. So colour doesn't have to be an issue. Next thing you need to think about is the UV resistance. Is it light fast? If you're just sketching in your sketchbook, you don't really care. But if you're doing a piece of artwork, you want it to be light fast. So you need to look for that. If you're going to reproduce it, digitally, so take a photo or scan it, then print it. Again, don't care whether it's light fast or not, but as I say, if it's going to be an original piece of work, it shouldn't fade. And then the third property that you're looking for is its water resistance. Is it waterproof? So if I put water over this, will it run or not? Or is it water resistant? So some of the colour runs, but you can still see the line. Or is it totally soluble? Any line you put down disappears when you put water and you just get the colour. So that's what you're looking for, those three properties of your ink. Now ink comes in two sorts. You get dye-based ink, which again, Artist drawing inks like these will be dye based. So the chemicals are actually dissolved in the carrier. And the problem with dye based inks is that they are usually not light fast. So if you see anything that says drawing ink, it won't be light fast. Fountain pen inks usually aren't light fast either. So because they are dye based. So anything dye based usually isn't light fast. Then you get pigment inks and these are inks where the particles aren't dissolved in the carrier, they're actually suspended in it. So the best known is Indian ink and pigment inks tend to be light fast or are light fast. So a pen like this with light fast ink, it's got a pigment ink in it. So those are the two main distinctions on the ink front. But you might also come across acrylic ink. FW inks are lovely from De La Rowney, come in all sorts of colours. You might come across iron gall ink, which is a really old ink that is permanent on paper and has uh, acid and the iron react in it. And we see that now through registrar's ink, which are designed not to fade. They chemically react with the paper and bond with it. So they're really light fast and really permanent. And registrar's ink is designed to last for 100 years, which is why you sign marriage and birth and death certificates in it. You might come across bullet inks. 
um, which actually are dye based, but there's some special chemical put in it that bonds with the, the paper to make them waterproof. So that's a really fast look at ink. Then we come to the pens. And pens come into two main categories. Reservoir, so it actually has the ink contained in it, or dip pens. Let's have a quick think on reservoir. So the classic reservoir pen is your ballpoint pen, or it might be a micron type pen. So these are technical pens. They've got a fiber tip, that, and they come in different widths. And this pen will basically stay at 0.4 millimeters until the ink runs out. You can get the same sort of pen with the same sort of ink, pigment ink, but in a rollerball, which is really nice to work with. It all sort of flows and that feels really the good. The reservoir pens you might come across are something like this Stabilo 0.88. Now this is a reservoir pen. It's got ink in it. Um, it has that fibre tip, but this is water resistant ink. So if you put it down, and then put some water over it, the colour will move, but you can still see that line. The Elegant Writer that I've got here, Reservoir Pen, it's got the ink in it, and again, is water resistant. So if you put water on this, it splits into turquoise and pink. I'll show you something drawn with it later. Those are all disposable reservoir pens. They have ink in them. When the ink runs out, you chuck them away. But you can get reservoir pens that are refillable. Of course, the classic fountain pen. And fountain pens are great to draw with. Really enjoyable. They come in different widths. They might come with little um, cartridges. Couldn't think what they were called. Cartridges of all different colours or you can get a little refillable one, which is, is super. The pen that I'd love to show you is a fountain pen, and I hope you can see if I put it against my hand. This has got a food a nib or food nib. I'm never sure how you say that. So it's a Japanese or Chinese pen, and you can do thick, thin and medium lines with it because it's meant to look like uh, a brush for typical Oriental um, calligraphy brilliant for sketching with. And then there are things like this uh, parallel pen from Pilot. So totally different take, not like your traditional fountain pen at all, but does a thick and a thin line. And again, fantastic for sketching to get real expression in your lines. So those are refillable reservoir pens and you can get brush pens you can refill and all sorts of things. Next category is dip pens and I've really separated those out into commercial ones and homemade ones. So if we start with the commercial, the traditional dip pen is simply ooh, throwing them everywhere, metal nib and a wooden holder and you simply put the nib in there, dip it into ink and, and off you go. And you can dip it into any sort of ink you fancy. You want a different sort of line? Just swap your nib over. And some nibs have a little bit on the back to, to hold more ink so that you don't have to keep dip, dip, dipping. One you might not have come across, which is absolutely gorgeous, is a glass dip pen. Look at that, so pretty. And you can get them really fancy or very plain. And you'll find they either come with a spiral groove here or straight grooves, and the grooves hold the ink. And it's amazing how one dip can go on for a, probably a paragraph of writing. So actually they're great fun to, to sketch with. Just have to be careful not to break the, the tip. So those are a couple of examples of commercial dip pens. But the lovely thing about dip pens is that you can make your own. The oldest pens in the world were dip pens. So a reed pen was the original pen 
pretty much a sharpened stick or, or a sharpened reed. This one is, is made out of bamboo. You could make them yourself, dip it in ink and off you go. And then of course we think of the quill pen. Again, very easy to make just with a, a pen knife <laughs> and sharpen that point dip and off you go you can be harry potter another super dip pen very expressive makes interesting marks is just to put a matchstick either you could tape it to a handle or this is actually a bit of bamboo out of the garden and you just put the matchstick in the end of the bamboo and that makes a really expressive pen or my absolute favorite this is called a cola pen if you're interested, I've got a whole film about how to make these, but they're made out of a, a drinks can and then onto a handle and they make thick and thin lines and incredibly expressive. So those are come into my homemade dip pen category. So just to reiterate, we have dye based inks and pigment based inks. We have pens with reservoirs and without, and we have homemade ones, disposable ones, refillable ones. So if you've seen all these different pens and all the different inks, you can see there are an infinite variety of possibilities. So what I'd suggest you do is just select a very simple object. As you can see, I've selected um, bottles of ink and then have a go with every single pen that you can find in the house. Um, so that was the rollerball pen. This was a fountain pen, but with a sepia ink. And you can see how putting the water over the top, the line is still there, but some of that color moves. This was using a technical pen, a 0.3, and that's waterproof and light resistant. This was a technical pen actually from Derwent, but it's a sepia one rather than black. This over here is great fun. That's the elegant writer that I told you splits into different colors when you put water on top. This was my homemade cola pen over here, but used with, with Indian ink. And that was my matchstick pen with Indian ink. This was the Stabilo 0.88, which is water resistant. So the line stays, but you can use water to pull out some color to make tone. That was the parallel pen from Pilot, so really broad. And then I've got that Fude nib here, which is, gives me a thin line as well as those thick lines. Down here, I've got the reed pen. That was the oldest sort of pen in the world. That's just a dip pen with a metal nib using um, Indian ink again. And that was the glass nib. And then this, the Stadler Lumicolor, is actually a refillable technical pen. So that just gives you an idea of a few of the nibs and a few of the inks combined. And just to give you a few more ideas of how some of these pens might work, this again is the Elegant Writer and you can draw with it and then pull the colours of the inks out so that you do your line and your wash all in one go. So in 2020 I did on Inktober with sketchy and so did sort of 30 faces in 30 days. One this was done with the technical pens here but with brush pens for these really dark lines. This one was done with drawing ink so we talked about using coloured inks and then using technical pen just to bring a few lines in there. This little sketch was done with that Stabilo pen and then I just used some water to pull out some of the tone in a little sort of 20 minute sketch. This portrait was done with quink ink, just fountain pen ink, that when you add water, it's black ink, but when you add water, it separates out into blue and sepia so that you get beautiful marks. And here's a fun one to end on. This is just done with a green ballpoint pen, but so don't overlook the most basic tool that you've probably got in your pocket already you can still use it for your, for your art and a ballpoint pen should be waterproof so if you ever wanted to add colour you could too but why would you want to add colour to Mr Green Man?